Fit video game. Are you skillful enough to navigate in the depths of hyperspace and outfight a constant stream of alien spacecraft? You will need to be deadly accurate and have lightning reactions. Freedom Fighters. One of a cluster of new video games. From Philips. Hi, thank you very much for joining us this evening. This is the Retro Shed. This is Craig Turner from Revival. Some of you probably know who he is. I suspect most people watching this know who you are. I would imagine so. Maybe some of them at least. Absolutely. And we welcome him to the Retro Shed. He's never been here. He's threatened to come here many times. He has threatened, but he's actually... Um... Usually when Barry's out. Yeah. <laughs> So we've done something very different this morning, uh, this evening, actually. It's, yeah. For us, it was very, very different. It was a bit guerrilla style, but it was fun. It's great. It's it, it's what people know me for, you know. I, I've been doing the yum yum retro uh, gaming <laughs> stream for a while. You know. Yeah, we've had a lovely lot of insults tonight about uh, Listen, Pinky Blinders. I'm, 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 I'm never, I'm never going to pretend to be something or not. I know where <laughs> I come from. That's why it, it just kind of stuck, you know. At least I'm, I'm getting the description right, and everyone's just not calling us just brummies like everybody no, else does. No, absolutely. Um, but no, it, it it has been fun, and I've been wanting to come and do something with you guys for a while, yeah. and I've been wanting to check out the shed. The shed's awesome, you know, and you know it's <laughs> it's it's good to kind of mix things up a little bit. It makes me look a little bit more professional, and I'm I'm lowering Barry down. I to don't my I level don't think now. we'll ever look professional in here, to be honest with you, the way we do things. But yeah, we did a live stream tonight, and that will be coming up in a bit. So what I've done, I've took I've took that footage. Good. I'm going to hack it up a bit and put some odds and ends in there and some close ups of the stuff that we were looking at um, and you'll get to see that later uh, Josh was with us as well but he's now disappeared off inside to get some gaming in before he goes to bed what time is it? it is 5 to 10 oh, yeah so he'll be uh, going to bed soon but he definitely was here for a while you might see his face appear and disappear every now and then during yeah. the live stream but uh, we've been to Arcade Club a couple yeah. of weeks ago that was brilliant what a great afternoon evening Super. Apart from the food, we won't mention uh, the food. Let's, let's go into the let's food. Let's talk about the food. Yeah, we got slightly upset, upset on that front, but uh, yeah, no, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a superb day. Yeah, we're, we're Midlands boys. We're used to a good curry after a day out yeah, and um, and I worked myself up to it as well. I was yeah. like, I'm gagging for a curry now. Yeah. Let's go and get some food, and then we can come back and game. But that's another story. Yeah, You'll have to watch the video. It's last video, I think, actually, for us. Go check out how we got on in Leeds at Arcade yeah, Club. But that, it's definitely somewhere you've got to go. Yeah, it was a brilliant weekend. Amazing. I mean, we, we've been going to Arcade Club since its inception. But the, the Berry one is probably the, the truest to our heart. But we had to check out Leeds. It was the new venue. Yeah. But getting everyone together in one place for something a bit more personal it's is a little It's difficult, difficult, isn't it? Because everyone's got, you know, commitments, family, jobs. wives, kids, jobs. And getting everyone actually to agree to go somewhere, it can take months you know six yeah. months sometimes isn't it, it? Planning. planning um but when it does come together sounds a bit like the 18 but when it comes together it really, it really, <laughs> okay Hannibal <laughs> it, when the plan comes together it came together and it came together it brilliantly did. so it um really but I do need to find thing. more footage of Duncan so I think we missed a trick with Duncan bless his cottons because he wasn't around when I was filming a lot of the time. I know he was around somewhere. I think he was hanging around by the street. He cabs. can't complain. No. We've got plenty of footage at him. We've got plenty of footage him at Revival, on stage, kicking everyone's butt at street fighter. Well, there you go, you see. As you probably know, you're head honcho of Revival Retro Events. How long yeah. has that been going now? Um, all in all, probably seven years, maybe eight years since its inception, I think. Um, How it, did it get started? What was your motivation? Did you wake up one morning and just think, I've got to do this? Or? You know what, it's not something we've actually talked about too much. There's been a lot of interviews with, with what we've done with Revival, but not how it came about. Uh, it, it was back in 2010 and 11, the event scene started to kind of arise. You know, there were other events starting mm. to appear. And a lot of us people who didn't really know each other were starting to get our heads together. Uh, and after the first couple of good retro events, uh, it was decided that some of the, the big conventions were going to go bigger. And some of us retro heads wanted something just purely for us. And it's a bit more of an intimate event, isn't it? It's, really? it's, it's much more intimate. It, it, it's, it's more per I wouldn't say intimate, but it's definitely more personal. 
yeah. it's more about the characters and the faces but it, do, it doesn't mean we can't have all the awesome stuff <laughs> um, it's just the fact that we wanted it to be pure retro and, and, and none of the other events were doing that let's, let, let's, let's go ahead let's do it so we did it and then it was well, well how big do we go you know and then yeah. before you knew it the amount of people getting on board with us was we thought well we've got to find room for all this yeah. and then people were saying yeah we'll attend that so we said well now we've got to find room for all these people to come so it's just got this natural growth about it over the past well I say natural growth we started <laughs> massive as he said how big do you want to go he said <laughs> said a couple of hundred us is 500 600 us is let's just call it a thousand and that was when we realised then when you get to that kind of capacity you're not looking at working men's clubs and, and, no, and not. social <laughs> centres anymore you're looking at, at stadiums and things like that yeah. and that's why the first one was it, it was way beyond what we could manage and somehow we did it yeah well before we look at what we've brought to show us today so yeah. a couple of other really quick questions first video game memories okay what was the first video game you ever played Oh, now, now you're asking. Um, <laughs> He's not seen these questions no, in no, years now. If, if, I, if I remember rightly, we were, t we were talking about uh, a console on the, on the stream, which was the Grandstand... Uh, I can't remember the model it's number. It's more like a TV game. Yeah, then. I think it was a 4600. Yeah. It's some kind of elaborated Pong console. And uh, so basically that system had uh, a light gun and it also yeah. had the uh, the, pa the paddles built in, yeah, so the spin one, spinner yeah. controls. Um, so it was a black and white TV. Yes, it was, and we had an ITT television in our oh. living room with a horrible wood Wooden grain cabinet. on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it had all the, the, the manual switch buttons. It wasn't remote, yeah. and you had to chat, turn the dials to tune it in every so often because yes. it would drift. Yeah, I remember on that we had obviously playing pong. There was like a light gun shooting game, so you were yeah. just target sniping. Uh, it was one player pong, two player pong. I think it had a breakout style game on there as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it was that. That was the first game I ever remember okay. playing. One word answer, Sega or Nintendo? Nintendo. Is, is, there never is a right answer. No, there, there isn't. There <laughs> There's isn't. never a right answer. And you know answer, what? It's, it's, something that, it's something that tears a lot. I mean, I, when it's I was... Like, it's like Brexit, isn't it? Dare I mention that it's word? It's true. That's the first time we've ever said the word Brexit, I think, in this holy place. Well, the, the, reason, <laughs> the reason I say Nintendo is because my favourite console of all time was the Super Nintendo. I still maintain. Mm. It was the only time in Nintendo's history where Nintendo, with their hardware, yeah. were ahead of their contemporaries. It, the Super Nintendo was delayed to be last out rather than first out, which they traditionally... Was it out after the Mega Drive? Yes. It was out by, quite, how... by uh, over two years. Was it? Yeah. I remember, I, I always think of them being no, almost released to market That's why time. in America, in, in America it was a big thing between the NES and the Mega Drive because of the yeah. way they overlapped. The yeah, Super there's Nintendo. no comparison is there with a Mega Drive no. there, so. and the Super Nintendo was delayed to be the best of its generation and it wasn't it just in its hardware it was because it was able to use custom chips in the cartridges that's what made the, the SNES excel there, there mm. were other more powerful things of the fourth generation like yeah. the uh, the Neo Geo CD the Neo Geo AES but nobody was buying yeah. one of those let's face it no. so You've just answered your next question. I was going to say, what's your favourite console of all time? The Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. Without a doubt. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, a, it's a tough one for me because of my generation, the Sega Nintendo thing was, it was more like my generation. Before, I remember the Spectrum and Commodore arguments. Yeah. But the I love them both, you see. There's, yeah, there's virtues exactly. to both of those systems, isn't there? And if I was to pick now... I don't think I could, I don't think I could do I it. could divide them because Sega had so many brilliant arcade hits and yeah. the arcade is where my real gaming core lies yeah, is the yeah, arcades yeah. and Sega did so much more in the arcade yeah. and did so much more to bring their own titles home the Mega Drive had so many more like the, the, the Super Nintendo had so many more super top end titles yeah. but the Mega Drive had so many more Good titles, if you know what I mean. Yeah. They had all their own arcade ports. Absolutely, yeah. Um, here's here's a question. Now I know I've got some really really strong views on this, and I know you have as well. Okay. What's right and what's wrong with the current gaming market? Right. Uh, yeah. What's the What's the one right thing about it? Well, about modern gaming, would you say that they've got spot on? Well, I suppose if. if the only thing you can really say about modern gaming they've got spot on is that they finally got the business model optimum for the people who are making the games. 
the the, the, the revenue stream. Yeah, because mean, yeah. because the industry is making more money than has ever been seen. But to me, before. that's what's also wrong with it. It is. Uh, this, <laughs> it's this, like this, it's a double edged sword. Yeah, isn't it, it is a double edged sword. That, that's also the problem. Yeah. The model is perfect for making money. Yeah. But it's also the model that short changes the consumer the most, and yeah. that is what I think yeah. is wrong with it. Yeah. You know, the, and this whole reliance to me, this whole reliance of online technology so yeah. rush a game to market it's nowhere near ready it's, yeah. they're just shoehorning them into game stores and online there's, there's no there's no attempt to to complete to a game it. no there's no attempt to finish yeah. it off there's no attempt to test it to the levels they used to and even if they do release it they'll say oh well we'll fix it and they don't always fix it no what have you brought to show us then? Right, the thing I brought to show you uh, this week is <laughs> this, this week. This week, <laughs> this week. Like blue we've got a selection of horse brasses. <laughs> well, what? <laughs> That's a fast show quote on it. <laughs> what, what I've got to show you is um, is actually more about what you've got to show me. But what I've picked up is this. This is the uh, the new multi cart two three three and one. Oh, lovely multi cart for the mm. uh, Magnavox Odyssey two, known over here as the Video Pack. G7000 Absolutely. console yep. and uh, the reason I brought it here to show you is because I have no experience with this console <laughs> or I have one, I own Do you one. Have one of was there one out of Revival? I don't believe I saw one at Revival. We have had one out in the past yeah, but we haven't had one out for the last. No, two I don't events, recall seeing one. Which is unusual because we do try to have one of everything if we yeah, can help yeah. it. It just depends on the floor space we've yeah. got. So uh, yeah, like I said earlier, we did a live stream looking at uh, the video pack G seven thousand, which will be coming up next. So we'll uh, we'll take a look at that. So Craig, thank you very much. I no won't keep up any more of your time. So it's really great to have him here. Hopefully he'll come back. Yeah, I will. And show us something. We'll else, definitely, yeah. we'll definitely do something else. I've, I've yeah. got loads of interesting stuff to show, and to be honest, yeah. it'd probably be better done, better serviced here than it yeah. would back in my kitchen. And you're not that far away. Yeah, I'm still in the Midlands. Yeah, exactly. the Midlands, So he's only up the road from us. So, oh, it's um, 30, 40 minutes. So enjoy time. the cut up live stream coming up, and yeah. thank you very much for joining us here in the retro shed. I'm Barry. Josh was around somewhere, but he's gone. And this is Craig Turner. So we'll catch you guys again soon. So take care. See you later. Hi yeah. guys, Darryl. how you doing? I know it's been a while since we've done like a serious stream on Yam Yam Retro Gaming, but it's been a mad summer. It's been a mad autumn. There's been a lot going on, uh, you know. Sorry, but I, I couldn't find Brooke streaming your music. <laughs> <laughs> I'll turn the watch off. Shut up, on. Apple Watch. Shut up, Siri. <laughs> See, and that's 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 the things you get on live streams. You so don't get to see usually, um, but uh, obviously, um, as you can see, I'm here today with my good mate Barry Morse from Retro Shed, and his son Josh. Josh, stick your head on. You're going to be there. Hello. There's a delay, but you will be there. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're all here today anyway, and um, I was going to do a video covering uh, the Philips Video Pack G7000. Uh, sorry, this is really surreal because we've got like a time delay going on on, on our feed on the back here. <laughs> Hello there. Um, but yeah, we've been wanting to cover this system for a while. Um, Barry's a big fan of this system, whereas I have literally no experience with it. And for one, with me finally going ahead and making the purchase of the latest uh, multi cart that's come out for the system. Yeah, I definitely want one of these. This looks you, nice. You've got to, in Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I thought it'd be wise for us to kind of come over, have a chat with Barry. I've been meaning to come over for a while, have a chat with him anyway. Come and check out the wonderful shed, which you can see a bit of in the background. I know this recording is going to be nowhere near as good quality as what those guys do, but um, nice. oh, and I will give a shout out to um, to Kev because he wants us to give a shout out to him and his daughter's birthday. Which one was it? He, he did say, didn't he? He did, and I asked him to remind me because I said there's no way I'll. Yeah, remember. sorry about that. So yeah, hi Kev. Anyway, I know happy you'll birthday. check the stream yeah, out. Happy yeah, birthday. happy birthday. Yeah, these are my good friends from the Retro Shed. A lot of you guys have seen these guys before. If you haven't, please get yourselves on YouTube. Please go to their channel, do subscribe, and do get the notification. You have to click the notification bell, don't you? To yeah, get, something make sure like you, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know that the, the rules are always changing with YouTube, so I'm not yeah, familiar yeah. with it myself. But please go on and check out their stuff because their stuff is. We're not just talking. We're not this this crap that I'm doing now. We're talking <laughs> that they edit it properly. It's all well lit. Well, we try. Well recorded. We try. It's all well. Re <laughs> it's all well rehearsed and all well researched. So, go and check their stuff. They've got some brilliant content. And obviously, I've done a lot with these guys with revival and various things. Um, you know, over the years, and just recently we took a trip up to Leeds, didn't we? For um, we did. When and how out. much fun was that, Josh? Not, yeah, it was good. It was good. Okay, I was cool. just reading Evening Retro. Yeah, Evening Gary. <laughs> How's it going, Gary? You're right, 
Ferrari. We're covering yeah the Philips, the Philips Video Pack G7000. Oh yeah. Yeah. Otherwise known as the Odyssey 2 in the States and Brazil, I believe. Yes, it certainly was. Um, and uh, if you didn't need that uh, reinforcing, um, the cover of this box kind of says it all anyway. Oh, that's so, nice, that is. Yeah, um, this is something that I've recently ordered. For anybody who's never seen this system before, um, it's basically, it's it's a weird kind of computer console is. hybrid, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. I'm trying to think what to like it to. I mean, in terms of actual appearance, it's like a speak and spell. You've got, you've got, you've got this kind of... Um, touchpad kind of like flat membrane keyboard. Yeah, that's pretty much spot on. Yeah, that's I'm trying is, to think. I think the big track's got a touchpad a bit like this, it hasn't does. it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, a big track up there, That's by the way. But oh, there we go. We've got, we've got the big track over there. We've got a very similar. It's touchpad. basically a membrane. It's a very cheap membrane keyboard. Isn't yeah, it? I mean, if you ever mess with oh, as it happens, I'll just um, borrow it in for reference. It's right phase. there. If you've ever messed with the ZX81 and the lovely feeling keyboard on there. <laughs> anyway, so you? uh, you're talking in television. Uh, Vectrex Fairchild Channel F, yeah. which is really but old, isn't we, it? We can't compare it to the Vectrex. No. The Vectrex is too good. <laughs> yeah. Totally outclassed. Vectrex obviously got its, its new it? cult following. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as as competing goes, I mean, that is you know where it was at. I think it was it was originally designed to compete with the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I mean, as, as, I suppose as far as sales goes, it didn't even compare, unfortunately. Um, no, no, I've got the stats here, and because I'm old, everything's down on paper for me. Um, so this sold 2 million units worldwide. Two million. 2 million units versus how many, Josh, for the Atari? 17 million. No, 30 million. Oh. 30 million yeah. 2,600. I think 17 it? million was my own oh, guess, remember, wasn't it? I yeah, just remember yeah. that <laughs> But you know, the Atari 2600 was killing it. I think that was probably yeah. most people that I know's real first yeah. exposure to a cartridge based system. Because this was 1980. 78. This? It was 1978. That's if what you I mean. can believe that. We had a lifespan until. I think it sold until 1982 when its predecessor came out. And I'd imagine mm. by that time it was pretty much obsolete. Yeah. So around the 1980 mark, you would have been yeah. competing with, you know, Grand over here, Grandstand had a massive line of yeah. Pong consoles. It did have a basic program for it, didn't it? You could, I think, you, you could, could buy a basic Hello. programming cartridge, but it was. You're reading comments. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's checking in. <laughs> Evening space cadets. Oh, how's it going? I've got Robert Lee. We've got Paul Monaghan. How's it going, Paul? You're right. Evening all. Hopefully the membrane lasts longer than the ZX eighty one. Yes, wow, yeah. yeah. I think it, I think it would. To be fair, I mean this is nineteen seventy eight. Yeah. I mean it's older than the ZX eighty one. But if you look at the, you can't really appreciate the condition on here. But this yours is mint. I've brought mine along today as well because we didn't know which one was going to be working the best, yeah. and mine is nowhere near it's as clean still, as this one. It's still even got the big made in France sticker on that everybody took off. <laughs> everybody took that off. <laughs> mine so too. it's got a bit of originality there, anyway. Um, and when, when your games come anyway, you've got these rather cool. This is something that I, I really wanted to mention, and it's something I wish they would kind of do now. And I think it's the direction mm. they're heading with the Spectrum yeah. Next, and that is cataloging the games. So you've got this kind of funky, kind of reversed tape kind of opening case, and then your cartridge was there laid inside with the, uh, the cover actually being made up of the inlay instruction booklet. A bit I, like that. I'd probably break that, to be honest. I think I did break a few of them actually when you, I was a yeah, kid. They the, look so breaking. There's, yeah. there's probably, but you know what? They were actually made a bit better now. They aren't made of the, yeah. the cheap tap plastic, I suppose, oh, that's God. being put around now. And needless, the, the cartridge had to have a handle on the top because they're so difficult. <laughs> they're so <laughs> di Unlike the Atari 2600, which is dead easy to plug, yes. like, these, you literally need a crowbar. They have a voice like grip. And they have this handle on the top just to help you. And now I'm getting arthritic and old. It actually helps me. It, do, it does <laughs> help. The, and I've seen quite a few of these out. cartridges where that's been broken so I know people are pulling hard and, he, and quite a lot of these cases have survived well so it's good that we've got a few available. And the later generation of games were presented with this red strip at the top so you could tell the games from about 1980 1981 onwards the artwork changed so they took the numbers off the front and put this red strip across the top And to be honest this this is more familiar with you know what you may have seen around the time that like Tate games were coming out you got the the kind of bold you know title you know the, the more impressive artwork mm -hmm. on the front 
Um, I, well, this obviously hasn't got screenshots on. This one has the screenshots on the front of the yeah. case. This one does away with the screenshots completely because I think the kids just went mad because it had terror horse. I mean, who needs screen it's screenshots? Terror horse, when yeah, it's got exactly. Terror horse yeah. On the front. Like, ah, terror horse. So this, this is more <laughs> akin to what you would have seen with your Spectrum or your Commodore games, you yeah. know, as they were coming out then. Speaking of the so, controllers, I mean, the controllers themselves, I mean, they're not the kind of thing you can just nasty, kind of stick on top or tuck yeah. to one side like with the Famicom. They, they are big, ugly, dirty... They're big, ugly. They hurt... As a kid, these things, if I was playing for hours, the sharp edges used to dig in. Yeah. Um, it's very light, very springy. Inside there is a membrane. There's just a membrane, a steel shaft... Yeah, now micro switches. ...and a spring, which you can probably hear. They're self-centering, and I think I broke both action buttons on mine. And They're course, nasty. And, of They're course, be, being hardwired, there's not a lot you yeah. can do if you do break them. So that's one the whole thing. console had to go back. We had to send it back really? to Philips dealership and they swap, under warranty, and they swapped the controllers out. I think it was gone for something like a month, which is a long time when you're oh, eight or nine years and old. especially <laughs> when everything's done by mail order, and yeah, you've got yeah. no clue of the progress yeah. or whether it's going to be honoured or anything. Paul Cole makes a good point there, uh, Josh. What does Paul Cole say about the box design? The box design is good. The way it could have been fixed is if they made the box open all yeah. the way. Yeah, so it only hinges yeah. 45 yeah. degrees. Okay. And I think I snapped mine because of that very issue. Uh, so had, yeah. Paul's got a good point. If they, if I'll they be honest, when the I opened it there, and I, I did, I did feel like... Is it stuck? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't <laughs> if I was going to have to pull it too far. Yeah. Evening, so. Don. Mr. Piccicino joined us. It's as, as indeed. Noiseville Rob. Uh, oh, Jason Adam Wildfield is a guy local to me there. Um, hi, guys. Nice to see you on here. Thanks for joining the stream tonight, by the way. I know it's a bit different. It's a bit alien. I know this, some of this is going to look a little bit weird if it's cut into the guy's video, but <laughs> I'm just trying to, uh, you know, we're all brothers in this, you know what I mean? And we're just trying to mix up the format Unlike a little the bit. Bitmap brothers who weren't actually brothers. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> and they're not actually anything anymore. Well, no, they're... they've just been sold to... Uh, anyway, we're going on a tangent. Well, <laughs> we always go off on a tangent. Well, we, Josh always we go, go off, off on, on a tangent. tangent. But we digress. It can't be helped. <laughs> uh, this one uses a dip switch based system. Um, it's quite an extensive dip switch system. You've got 14 yeah. switches. Some of them are, are quite short. I know the early Vectrex multi-carts were switch based. I had one of those myself until... The Vet Multi came out, and then I started using that. That one's the one. That one's got a proper menu on it. Yeah, um, that'll be like learning binary all over again. It trying does, to program that yeah, thing. It, it does kill a little bit of the convenience in that you need to have this and this handy at all times if you want to see what games you're running. A more advanced version of this. Two hundred thirty-three variations of Pong. Yeah. That's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Now it's it's not as it's not as bad as some of the, the bad Neo Geo multi carts with loads of clowns on, or you know, it's not as bad as I'm I'm trying to think of some of the other multi carts that that compete. I mean, if you ever seen any of the NES clowns, you've seen the amount of no, times they yeah. copy the games on those. Yeah. No, it's nothing like this. This this has been done properly. Uh, if you go down the list here, you can see that we've got two or three versions of each of the games. Now, what what you tend to find with that is. Um, this needs to readily identify whether the game, in most instances, is PAL or NTSC, because technically the hardware is the same uh, apart from the actual video output. But from what I understand, if you select the wrong version, it won't display anything at all. So okay. uh, the 2K games and the 4K games, but then there's also additional ones for the G7400, I think it yeah. is. Yeah, the G7400 Plus, which is... 1983 that was released third generation console higher resolution more powerful chipset and able to handle backgrounds and fancier sprites so rather than just your kind of blocks on a solid background as yeah. you're going to see with most of these <clears throat> you'd have actually had layers I yeah suppose, yeah I, i've seen terror hawks run on a 7400 and there's like a planetary backdrop instead of a black screen that you get with this is it the same like cartridge planet? for both it's the same cartridge i'm sure so the, da the data for the game is whether you run it on here so it's basically a backwards compatible yeah, 7400 so, yeah. game yeah so, well, there you Which go. is fascinating because I've always wanted to see what else is on that cartridge. Ah, well, you know, <laughs> no, no, you'll know. So, what that, is that something FIFA would do? No internet updating back. What is that something FIFA would do? Just it's it's the same pretty much, it's, it's just the same principle, yeah. I mean, let's face it, FIFA hasn't changed for 25 years. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I suppose if Mindstorm would have continued, we'd been on Mindstorm 37 by now or something like that. And it would still be a better game. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even get me started on FIFA. No. I've had so many discussions no, no. about the the the, uh, the tribulations. I'll get the code. Oh, that's the uh, <laughs> FIFA. Yeah, it only came out for full release this year. Um, is where they've added in the G seventy four hundred games, and uh, probably a few extra 
homebrew of the games that have appeared on there. So, how much is it and where'd you get it from? Right, the, <laughs> this cartridge, <laughs> um, I believe it was 40, uh, I think it was, I'm going to get this right now, you put me on the spot, I believe, sorry, I believe it was $50. Um, okay, so about 45 quid, something Yeah, like that. Plus, plus shipping, by the time it comes to the UK and by the time it arrives here, because this comes from... I think it was Canada this came from. It's a company called Packrat Games. I know some people were asking yesterday, so if, you, if that's appearing in the feed now... I'll stick a link on that. Yeah, we'll today. stick the link and everything on afterwards, yeah. This this came from Canada, and you do... Uh, but it, it was bought in US dollars, which was strange. That's not bad. I mean, most multi carts usually you're looking 80, 90 quid, aren't you? But with this being a system, this was your very first console. This was bought for me in Christmas 1979. It was, was it this exact one? Or have you I don't this on think this thing? was the exact one, no. I, I, do you know what? I think... I I gave the exact one to a friend of mine called um, David Broad. I think he might still have it. It's lost somewhere in Kings Norton. So this this is not the one I was bought, but it's you know it's probably in better condition than the one that I had. Um, yeah, I saw it originally in Rackham's in Birmingham, Corporation Street. Rackham's. <laughs> there you go, back. <laughs> big, big wooden cabinet TV. Do you remember those? I do, yeah. And I just walked past and saw it. And because I had my heart set on um, an Atari 2600, like most kids, I saw this, and for some reason I thought, and this is what sold this, the keyboard. Yeah. I took one look at that and I thought, wow, it's a computer, it's not just a console. I suppose and it's because... And that was a major selling point of this machine, the fact that it had this this, this really well, attractive Well, you think about the, the Y2K aesthetic as it stood then. The future yeah. in 1980 looked yeah. different to the way the future looks now. Yeah. So I suppose back then it looked futuristic. Well, it was looks, all silver yeah. and If you compare sleek. that to an Atari 2600, yeah. which even by 1979 was looking dated... Yes. You know, you had the wooden the strips wood grains, and the six yeah. buttons. And the, I looked at that I thought, that looks so much more future. It looked like something from Space 1999, didn't it? And rather than being and solid, it's, it's yeah. more moulded, it's got I thought, wow, curves to it. I want that. I was a swine for going rummaging for presents when I was a kid. <laughs> and I found I found a big bundle of towels in the airing cupboard. And I thought, we haven't got that many towels, so what's under there? So I hit it. Heard a crunch. I thought, ooh. <laughs> I moved the towels out of the way and I found this lovely gift wrap box and I put my finger in it and tore it and all I saw was the word Phillips. I thought, oh. So I found, I found, that, yeah, before, yeah. I found that in the airing cupboard two weeks before Christmas Day. And, oh my God, I was like so giddy for about two weeks. Wait, You're a bad child. I, I never bad, generally yeah. did that. Oh, I never did that. I was a swine for doing that. No, <laughs> I, I think I did it the one year and it was the year... I had my NES as it happened, so yeah, the excitement was about the same because the NES was my first oh, console. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's Rob Utley just said? Years later, my dad's justification for buying the main Prezi on Xmas Eve was so we wouldn't have found it in the house <laughs> the week before. Tearing, it, tearing apart all the... <laughs> I can imagine, for, for lack of... Uh, if you're going to use your imagination, I don't really think I'd want to tear apart my dad's secret hiding places no. <laughs> for fear of what I might find. Moving on. <laughs> so, yeah, you what? can... <laughs> <laughs> well, don't don't play innocent with me. Um, but yeah, that's that's very much why I, I think I didn't want to go mooching round. Hello, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> the boy is with us. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the thing is, you you've got a lot of nostalgia for this, and like yeah. I said, this was your first um, exposure to a, a cartridge-based yeah. system. I would imagine there was Astro Wars, then there was this, then there was MSX, which of course had cartridges yeah. and, yeah, yeah. and possibly tape. to a tape loading yeah, yeah. it's a bit of a bit of a hybrid maybe that's why it wasn't so popular my maybe. first console love and you never forget your first love that's you? true so yeah that's true so <laughs> so what kind of games then did you play on this give me some give me um, some titles on christmas morning i only had one and i was still chuffed to bits with it and that was video pack 22 that was space monster right so that was uh philip's take on space invaders Oh, okay. So you were having you said, you said Space Monster. I don't know why I pictured a Pac Man clown. No, no, it was. It was I know there is a Pac Man clown. It was Space Invaders. You were a right. white pyramid at the bottom of the screen. Okay. And it was just a blatant rip off of Space Invaders. Is it a good version? It's not bad. It's not bad at all. You know what? I will find that and I will. While, while yeah. you're looking at some of the things on here, I'm going to program that one into here and we can take a yeah. look at that. What game have you got in here at the moment? That is Terror Hawks. So, yeah, this is. It's got absolutely nothing to do with Terror Hawks, if I'm honest. But you're that base at the bottom and you're shooting squadrons of flying saucers and each round gets faster and faster and their weapons get... I'll get rid of that one. 
and it's very good. I remember thinking this is really good. Is it analog control or is it digital? Digital. It is digital yeah. because there seems to be like a but speed up is, and slow yeah, down, like yeah, a you've got inertia. There's a bit of inertia on your on your ship. You're not very good. <laughs> <laughs> Says the boy. But notice one thing about this. One thing it had over the Atari Twenty Six Hundred: no screen flicker. Yes. The visuals are very stable, and there is no screen flicker. Well, I was about to say because even though the, the, you know it's that kind of double wide pixel Atari Twenty Six Hundred style of graphics, the movement on the enemy ships there and the colour size quite fluid, it, isn't it? Yeah, it's very Twenty Six Hundred, but you don't have that flicker or that. Yeah. I don't know. There's, there's always even though like they were pretty basic, there was a very much a choppiness to Twenty Six Hundred yeah. games I found. Give or take, okay, Defender was, was super slick, but it still had that flicker. Um, and, you know, I think there's a, a more appealing palette on this. Uh, how many colours, Josh? 16, was it? 16. Yeah. 16 uh, colour palette with sprites able to use eight colours only. Well, see, it's not, it's not necessarily the number of colours that's the issue, no. but the choice of palette. I mean, you compare the kind of neon rainbow of a spectrum to the yeah. the kind of pastel colours of a Commodore 64, you know, even though I know yeah, the Commodore 64 had more to choose from, um, I'd say that's a bit more pleasing to the eye, I mean, now that I could probably sit and play for a good while, you know what I mean? Incidentally, this game was called, it wasn't Terraports in the States, it was called Attack of the Time Lord. So what they did, they just took the game, licensed Terrorhawks. Wasn't Terrorhawks popular in America then? I don't think it was, it was a British show, wasn't it? One of the most controversial games for this console was, uh, what's it called, KC Munchkin? Right. Which was a Pac-Man clone. Um, and of course everyone was ripping everybody else off in those days. So Pac-Man for this was called KC Munchkin and it was developed in-house. And of course when Atari saw it, they wanted to put a stop to it straight away. So they took Phillips to court and actually got the game removed from the shelves. Good there it is. Is it as good as that? Ms. Pac-Man on the Atari 2600? I'm not sure, but that's that's Munchkin on the on the G7000. We should and definitely give that one a spin in a minute. Yeah. Uh, on camera. Oh, look at that. There we go. That does remind me a lot of 2600 yeah. Space Invaders, to be fair. So you can't really. destroy the bottom row because they're shields. Can they be eroded by your... Nope. No? no, they can't. They pop out. So you've got those robots at the top in front of little gun turrets. It's faster than I remember. Damn. <laughs> Oh, so you become a little dude yeah. when your ship gets so blown up. So when you get blown up, you become a little dude, and those bases <laughs> contain your spare ships. So in, oh, in Space Invaders, they're just pretty much your um, barriers, aren't they? Your so, barriers. so graphically, it's actually given a little bit more than you would yeah. have got from the original, and obviously you've got full colour on this. You're not very good at this, are you? <laughs> You know, that's the second time I've heard that now. Now, seeing as though, seeing as though we've got the benefit of multi-generational input, I think it's only right that Josh should fair. step on in a minute oh, and have to demonstrate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, now I think it's got to be done. I think it's got to be done. I'll be honest, I don't think I could do any better than Barry. Uh, but I've seen this kid just play R-Type. So if you can handle R-Type on the arcade, I think he can handle space monsters. Josh, if you don't mind, I can please. Handle, I can handle ghosts and ghouls, man. There you go. <laughs> So let's see how he gets on. Oh, this control is weird. See, that's the thing, you've got to get used to the controls first, but a good yeah, workman yeah. never blames, never blames his tools. tools. I don't like this controller. Can you destroy the green ones at the bottom? No, they contain your spare ships, so when you get shot... No, is that about those green circles? No, the green circles. Oh, no, meant. no, they, you can't destroy them. So that's like their shield, are you? Yeah. Oh, okay, I get it. Bottom row you cannot destroy. You're not very good at this, are you, Josh? Hey, sure. <laughs> <laughs> So press your fire button when you go under a square. There you go. Oh dear. Oh, oh so that's how you pick up. Oh. Yeah. oh, you tell me when I die. Nice. It's actually got a bit more of a, a layer to it yeah. then than, than space. So it's not just and a straight up. And if you get shot as the dude, you are completely dead. Whoa. Oh, he's come down to have a go at you. Yeah. The weird one-eyed octopus thing. Look at the animation on his legs. It's not bad, it's, is it? It's not bad at all. It, it, it is a strange kind of spot this occupies in my mind. Because it's like, it's not pure. Wait, go away. It's not as tacky as a. I'm gonna say it's not as tacky as a 2600 game. What is this I find a lot of 2600 games tacky, you know, very quickly done. Hey. Oh, he's getting the game, the hang of it now. Oh, he's not. No ship. How do I shoot? What do you do if you're stuck like that then? 
balls. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very good at this. Well, you've had a practice run now, so you should be better this time round, in theory. So while Josh is playing that, I found a sheet of paper here with Josh's notes on. And for those that are of a geek, I'll give you a little background, yes. shall I say. So the console has an Intel 8048 8-bit CPU running at 1.79 megahertz. Oh, he doesn't mind notes. 64 bytes. I know I've got them. Sorry, mate. 64 bytes of internal RAM. 64 bytes. Not kilobytes. Bytes. Just bytes. Yeah, it's... Uh, a whopping 128 bytes of external RAM. Oh, I'm trash. I'm actually dreadful. It has an Intel 8244 custom video chip. Now, depending on whether it's NTSC or PAL, it's got an 8244 or an 8245. Maximum resolution is 160 by 200 pixels. 160 by 200. That is shocking. That is shocking. 16 color palette. I'm so bad. Video and audio output is via RF modulator, but in France, now I didn't know this, in France they had a SCAR connector on theirs. SCAR? Lucky swines. Yeah. A chap yeah. called Ed Averett wrote nearly all the games single handed. Well, it makes sense to Should recycle your assets, yeah. doesn't it? You know. Yeah. Oh, I outdid him so hard there. I'm guessing a lot of the games would feel very similar then. This is it. So, this is a game called Freedom Fighters, which was. Philip's take on Defender. Yeah, so you can. Find... You do get a nice little animation of the ship turning, which yeah. I wouldn't have expected in this kind of resolution. I thought it would just jump between left and right, you know, sprite. And it's quite fast. It's a bit frantic. And what you're looking to pick up, if I remember rightly, a lot, little like there's one. So you pick up that little. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. So you pick up the little dudes in the uh, squares. It is quick. Thankfully not as fast as Defender, because Defender <laughs> kills me. I can't play Defender. It's, it's, I can't do it. Too it's, many buttons, isn't there? I think we, we discussed this at Arcade Club, and we you said it's one of those games that you want to like, but it's you either I think you either love it or hate it, and yeah. it's, I can't get on with the controls. I can't get on with the controls. Dean Head just says it sounds like Peaky Blinders. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. These southerners. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> yeah, well, you, the difference is here, you, you're actually hearing real accents here. Not that fake rubbish know, you see I, on I TV. I, I can put my fake one on if you want. <laughs> no, you only use that one when Aaron's around. Yes. Eat a right. If people are wondering why I'm grinning like a buffoon, it's because I'm just reading these comments here. Where's Cillian Murphy? Has he turned up with his C64? Oh, there's always <laughs> one. <laughs> Christmas soon, guys. <laughs> <laughs>